Okay, we're talking to Dr. Timothy Leary, uh, who you really should know about. For those who lived through the 60s, and most of us did, th this man was extremely important, and that's why you're here, because you were so associated with the, the drug culture. Let me also refresh your memory. Nine years ago, Art Linkletter's 21-year-old daughter, or rather 20-year-old daughter, Diane, took a fatal six-story plunge to her death. You leaving, Dr. Larry? Why are you leaving? Why are you leaving? Seriously, you're not leaving. I want you to sit right here. I want you to sit down. You're not leaving. I want you to sit down. I'm under arrest. Oh, you're not under arrest. I'm I want under you to arrest. Sit down. Art, can okay. you hear me? Can you okay. hear me, Art? Art Linkletter? Art, are you there? <laughs> I want you to stay for a while. I want you to stay. I'm not, I'm not yeah. sandbagging, but I want you to come to this uh, in, in an intelligent way and not be funny. You're 60 years old, a grown man. Please sit down here. No one leaves this show. They answer the questions. Art Linkletter, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Art? Art Linkletter is in Columbus, Ohio. Uh -huh. And I apologize. We're apparently having some phone problems. His 20-year-old daughter, as you know, plunged to a death, jumped out of a window. He claims that people who manufactured and sold LSD were responsible for her death. Do you think that's true? Well, later I understood he admitted that she hadn't had LSD for several months before that. Now, the relationship between Art Linkletter and his daughter, or the relationship between Art Linkletter, who's made a living for 20 or 30 years making fun of kids, you know, things that happened 10 Dr. years Leary, ago. Come Dr. Come Leary, do you see any relationship come between on. her death caused by L uh, now do you think that, she, that, that LSD was a part of her death the fact that she committed suicide how, do, how does anyone know I would say the chances are a thousand one no so but, you but I certainly made a lot of money and got on a lot of shows he got himself into the Nixon White House how many riding uh, on the death Dr. Of his Larry how many and I think that's ghoulish uh -huh. how many LSD ghoulish for people like Dr. Carol Larry? Burnett whose ratings are going down. Let me ask Carol you this Burnett question. Do we have a phone call? Art, Art, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear right, you. I'm sorry we have technical problems. Dr. Timothy Leary is here. Let me ask you this question. I know that Diane died in 1970. What part did LSD play in this in your judgment? It played a very vital part and it caused her to become bewildered and agonized about life and take her own life. And in fact, right, I think it was you second. that wait caused a minute. No, wait a minute. Dr. Larry. Your hypocrisy. All right, no, wait a minute. And you're riding it. Did you, right. get, you got to the Nixon White House, didn't you? Because you became, on the basis of his daughter's death, no, wait a minute. he rides That's into an the outrage, Nixon. Tim. That's ghoulish. Oh, stop. I'm, I will That's throw ghoulish. you off the show if you don't listen to these <laughs> questions. Well, <from> Art, <laughs> let me ask you this. Art, I know. <laughs> Art Linkletter? Yes. I apologize Would to you. Would you take the microphone away from that idiot and let me talk for a minute? Yes, I will. Go ahead, Art. Tell us what you want to say. In subsequent investigations following her death, I have absolute definite proof that Diane had mentioned Dr. Leary as one of the reasons why she thought that there was nothing wrong with LSD and believed what he said when he said it was God's gift to young people. And I think that this man, Dr. Leary, I had hoped he would die. I had hoped he would be hung. Then I had hoped he'd stay in prison for life. And now, I'm glad he's out as a pitiful example of an aging hippie, a gruesome spectacle of how drugs can ruin a brilliant mind, a third-rate comic in cheap nightclubs with a routine that evokes pity, I've seen it on TV, exploited like any ex-convict with a sensational past, and I predict and hope and pray that his next appearance in show business is where he belongs, in the sideshow of a circus, not as a barker, but as a freak inside. All right, how do you know? You mentioned documentation. Which, by the way, do you want to respond? I've never seen a more withering blast in my life. You must respond to that. Oh, I've had dozens of them. But I mean, seriously. I mean, I, that no, would have been No, go on, go on, go on. What are you going to say? How do you know that... What, what evidence do you have of the documentation that LSD was responsible for her death? Well, it's an absolute fact. Her boyfriend, her brother, she talked to her brother several times before she died. She was getting flashbacks from LSD. She was not a drug addict. She was an experimenter like so many of the young kids who were believing. And mind you, I do not blame Dr. Leary for all of this. I think he was an important part of it. Such things as Grace Slick and the Jefferson Airplane and the rock group singing the songs of drugs. People who were like Ginsberg the poet and even Aldous Huxley in his doors of, rece of, of uh, perception was talking about the glories of drug abuse. It was a drug world, but Timothy Leary happened to be an intellectual university-based guru and gave the youngsters a kind of a rallying point. They weren't just talking about hippies. They were talking about an intellectual leader 
and he, who is by saying these things, was giving them an additional argument for experimentation in this tremendous time of the 60s. Well, I have a few questions. I'd like to get it off to him just for a little bit. All right, briefly, what do you say to parents? You've had this experience. You have you had five children. You have four now. If if the kids, if the parents are involved. I'm sorry, if kids are involved in drugs, what do you say to parents? What should they do about it? Don't panic. Don't beat up on the kid, physically or emotionally. Don't rush off and call the cops, but rather develop an attitude of listening and patience and understanding. The first thing every parent should do is to learn something about drugs and stop making it an emotional hot button. Right. And I want to tell you a study of teenage kids who do not use drugs or booze. And we're always studying the kids who do, but let's look at the kids who don't. Nine out of ten of them are close to their parents. Nine out of ten of them say that their parents check up on them, know what they're doing and who they're with. And eight out of ten, eight out of ten say that religion is an important or moderately important to them. Listen, Art, when are you coming to New York? Uh... Probably in a couple of weeks. Would you come on our show? We want you to be on the show. It's important. We have statistics that at least one million people every month are involved. In, I don't know what they are, but they're alarming. If one is involved, it's too much. Listen, I lecture. I know you do. And travel all over the country. In fact, I'll be in Chattanooga tonight speaking for Teen Challenge on the show. Come, come up here, will you? We're at WCBS in New York. Love to be on Give your show. Give my best to Jack. I went to Emerson Junior High School with your son, Jack Linkletter. Good for you, Stan. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thanks very much. All right, Dr. Leary, look, we've sandbagged you to some extent. You are not written. Are you all right? Am I all right? Yes. How many LSD trips have you taken? Well, it's like how many times have we made love? You know? Well, you've, they say you've taken 600 LSD Maybe. trips. Does that sound about right? Could be. Do you think you've lost any of your brain power? I mean, seriously, I mean, you think you've suffered any brain damage as a result of that? Yeah, I, I think I'm uh, one of the smartest people on the planet today. I'm writing two or three books a year. Right. I'm uh, giving lectures. I'm uh, very well received. I'm, You're also being I, I, arrested, I admit aren't you? That I must be stupid. I must be brain damaged to get sandbagged this way. Right, right. Yeah, it's like, but. Uh, Were you sandbagged, but, for example, on August 30th, 1979? Here's the Los Angeles Times. Yeah. Can you see this? Larry and wife arrested on drug charge. Uh -huh. And there was a, the couple's five year old son, who had been sleeping, was placed in the care of a family friend. Your son was there when you were arrested. Yeah. What were you taking? But you didn't follow up on that, that there were no illegal drugs whatsoever. But you were there taking no drugs, crime. weren't you? There was no, uh, absolutely, we were making love in our bedroom when the police came through the window. What kind of drugs were you taking, yeah. though? Legal drugs. What kind of drugs? Yeah. Legal drugs. What does that mean? Drugs you get from a prescription. Tell us one. Look on the camera. Tell us, what, what was the drug? Are we on the camera now? Yes, or? sir. Just, yeah. just focus on this camera. See, what? here's the situation. Go ahead. Um, uh, Number one, this was a setup. The police came into our bedroom. Mm -hmm. There were no illegal drugs there. Before this happened, I'd been on television saying that we don't take any illegal drugs to feel better or to increase our intelligence or to, uh, you know, become better lovers, but we do take legal drugs. Now, on the basis of this statement, we take legal drugs, the police busted in and arrested us. So now, in public, I say we don't take any illegal drugs to feel better or to get smarter. Why would you need it 59 years of age? we don't take any Tim, legal Tim, why would drugs. you need drugs anymore? Well, uh, that, that's none of your business. No, it is my there business. There happen to be 60 million people in this country who like to smoke marijuana, uh -huh. and it's none of your business or the business of the government right. to be uh, Doesn't harassing Doesn't society us. have the right to protect itself against people like you or against drug takers? Seriously. Go back to Iran. You're an Ayatollah. What do you want to do, cut the heads off uh, uh, people who drink beer because you don't want to? Right. You have absolutely no right interfering in the business of uh, what goes on right. with 45 million You're a real example of open-minded in, in this country. It's, it's brought us, uh, it's been a mixed bag, hasn't it? Uh, I think that maybe one hour a year, someone like me comes along mm -hmm. and challenges the Judeo-Christian ethic. Mm -hmm. My main function is to re reduce guilt to reduce fear and to encourage people to thumb your nose at authority. That's right. Now, one hour a year I do this, and am I sandbagged and you're set up and you've got Art Link? You can't let my voice go out right. for a when half an hour. Back, excuse me, Doctor. Yeah. A recovering drug addict from Odyssey House, CIA.